Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Welcome back to our 2020 SHOT Show coverage. I just want to take this time to remind everyone to go to HankStrange.com and sign up for our email list. Very important nowadays. All right, all this time you were not rolling. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. Yeah, now we're rolling. Yeah. All right. All right. So welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange. We're doing the 2020 SHOT Show. Um, we're here on the convention floor. We're actually inside of a booth. Uh, for, for Franklin Armory. What do you guys call this? Like your meeting space? Yeah, this is our conference room. Yeah, conference room. They, business gets done. Yeah, exactly. Where it really goes down. The magic happens back here. Uh, we're here with Jay. He's the owner of Franklin Armory. We also have some, uh, we've got some other people. We've got Sun that I'm sure you guys have seen before. We've got Brandon here. Uh, yeah. They're not, they're, that's it for them. Don't show them too much. <laughs> it's not about them, it's about Jay. Uh, really, uh -huh. what, what I wanted to do, Jay, there's a lot of things going on with Franklin as a company. I think, to me, you guys are different from a lot of companies out there because you're not just trying to manufacture something and sell something. I think that you are, um, in your own way, revolutionary, right? You really care about the Second Amendment, Truly. Constitution, and guns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Um, that means there's lots of fights that I think that folks out there don't really realize you're having those fights or those battles all the time. Yeah, whether New Jersey, California, we have our conflict and our resolution with ATF and right, that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, there's yeah. Lots, lots of different things that crop up and they all relate to the Second Amendment. And one of our philosophies, the way we do it, we always try to work nicely at first with mm -hmm. whatever agency. And as we progress, we, we, we find that they, um, they either are going to comply with the law, which is what we're all beholden to, mm -hmm. or they're not. And so uh, in the case of New Jersey, uh, they actually concluded, well, you know, that Reformation thing, we can't sell that there because, uh, you know, somebody might get arrested. Mm -hmm. They actually said that. So who concluded that? Because I think, I mean, let's, let's start with Jersey. That's obviously one that's a little, that's... Well, not a little, a lot public, right? Well, without using a specific officer's name, because mm -hmm. there's no benefit in doing that, it, right. it was a member of their state police that mm -hmm. concluded that, and a high-up lieutenant replied in writing. And I actually called the guy up, and I said, um, Sir, is this really your opinion, and this is what you guys are sticking with, because this doesn't comport with the law, and here's why. And his response was, yeah, that's what we're going to do. And yeah. I said great, well, you're denying our rights under call of authority, uh, there could be damages related to that. And so that case is actually in process now. Uh, they recently asked for more time from the judge. And the funny thing about it was they, uh, they denied service. They wouldn't uh, accept normal service professionally. Attorneys mail stuff to each other all the time and, and, and service is rendered. In this case, they wouldn't accept it. So we had to actually hire a process server, send it down to them because all they're trying to do is delay. Yeah, they're so, playing hardball. Can we, just be, like, can we just go back and explain to the folks if someone out there doesn't know what happened, like specifically what are we talking about? Which gun? How did that start out uh, being sold in New Jersey? And, th and then come to this point where it became an issue? Because I think it was for sale, right? Um, yeah, it, it, it was okay. for sale. The dealer had brought it in. Uh, mm -hmm. Reformation is a farm that uh, could have a short barrel. It has a stock. In many ways, it may look like a rifle, but the barrel has straight cut lands and grooves, so consequently, mm -hmm. it's not a rifle. Right. And Because uh, rifling must in part spin on the barrel. Mm -hmm. And their definition of shotgun aligned um, more with the NFA, and of course this is not an NFA weapon, so, uh, but irrespective of whatever the gun is, if mm -hmm. they, they're required to follow the law, just mm -hmm. as so are we, so are you, etc. And they chose not to. Yeah. And so the consequence of that is that their state um, may very likely be paying damages, and uh, I, they asked the judge for another 21 days, and I, I think the, the, actually they asked the judge for 30 days, I think the judge went with three weeks instead, mm -hmm. something like that. So it's moving forward. So my understanding from that is that uh, s somehow they came across this gun. It is, was, it, was it already being sold or before it started being sold, someone said, hey, we're concerned that people might get arrested? Well, no, what happened was it was uh, shipped in, a customer ordered, it was mm -hmm. shipped into the dealer. Mm -hmm. The uh, dealer calls up the New Jersey State Police. Mm -hmm. 
and the state police said, um, well, you can't sell that there. It's, it's, it's not legal. So that got us involved. Okay. And originally they said it was legal. Mm -hmm. And then they said, oh, wait a second. ATF has called this an SBS. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, yes, yes. It's a GCA SBS, not a NFA mm -hmm. SBS. So this is transferable in your state and there's no issue there. It's not a shotgun under New Jersey law. It's not a shotgun under NFA. Okay. So the paperwork that you guys always, I, I know you always have a letter mm -hmm. in the packaging. Mm -hmm. So that dealer saw that packaging or that letter. Was I not, think they saw the firearm and they double-checked. Yeah, they weren't, on. okay, yeah. So they double-checked to see if they could do it. Those guys didn't necessarily know or they were in doubt and then so this whole issue popped up and so now it seems from what you're saying that they kind of played hardball in the beginning and got into it because initially you were willing to just work it out like explain why this is why it should be available oh yeah they yeah. they chose not to go that route yes we spent a considerable amount of time explaining mm -hmm. it to him writing you know, multi-page letters defining exactly why this is legitimate mm -hmm. in new jersey utilizing both state and federal law. Uh, then even our attorney followed up with them mm -hmm. to, to let them know it's it's coming. Yeah. And they said, damn the torpedoes, send it. Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> and and it could potentially be very expensive for them. Yes. So they're delaying, they're playing delaying tactics right now. <laughs> Ultimately, justice can't be delayed, right? We've... Right. Well, I think what we've seen in the last few years is that uh, Places like California, we've actually had this before, where mm -hmm. we were suing the state of California on something. Mm -hmm. NRA actually even helped us on this case. It's going back a few years now. But so we were suing, and uh, while it was being held up in court, they went ahead and rewrote the law. Okay. Now, the difference here is the damages occur now. Mm -hmm. both in New Jersey and another case we have going on in California. Mm -hmm. So those potential damages are accruing now, and uh, both uh, consumers and dealers and distributors, as well as us, mm -hmm. can all take advantage of those potential damage claims mm -hmm. as, time, as time goes on. So mm -hmm. uh, the longer they delay, the more damages uh, accrue. But I talked to distributors, they turn the product six to ten times a year. Well, uh, if it's if they make X number of dollars per gun every time it sells, well, times that by six to 10 for every year that they're delaying it. Mm. How, you know what I'm thinking? Like as a company, how often are you dealing with that, right? Because I think on the consumer side, we're not thinking that, you know, how many gun stores across the country think, oh, I don't know, what, is this legal? Let me call up someone. And then all of a sudden it just starts off a thing. How often is that happening for you guys? Well, we, we try to avoid it, mm -hmm. uh, the litigation, but mm -hmm. we're not afraid of it. So mm -hmm. we'll always look for the solution that is amicable. And the, the way I look at everything is that you have a rule book, right? We, mm -hmm. we all got to follow the rule book. And the state police, they're good referees or should be good mm -hmm. referees if they're cops worth their salt. If mm -hmm. they're not, then they shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. They should have their hands slapped. Mm -hmm. And when they come up with a conclusion that doesn't, um, it's not founded upon the elements that lead up to it, then they're out on a limb on their own. And mm -hmm. so we again try to advise them and, and show them what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. And we are a nation of laws, right. a constitutional republic. I would like to think so. Yeah, focus yeah. on that constitution and the written law. If you don't like it, rewrite the law. Yeah. But damages might be accruing while you, yeah. while you deny us the lawful transfer and sale of product. Yeah. So that's where they get slapped. Well, don't you think it's like a strategy? Isn't it almost the same way that like a police officer deals with a suspect? And, right? Uh, I, I feel, this is what I feel. So when I look at it and, and I see what's happening with the ATF, for example, and manufacturers, it feels like they treat you like, listen, take this plea deal. Right? Give up right now. It's not going to cost you. We're the government. It's going to be expensive for you. I mean, you, you and I know that. There's people out there that just don't have the financial wherewithal to keep fighting these things. And they're like, listen, I can't fight the man. And I walk away. And I think they win most of the time like that. Right. You know? And I'm sure it's not, you know, I'm sure it's expensive for you guys to do it. Well, it is expensive, but we mm -hmm. see the fact that there is uh, ways to get uh, damages to get court costs and fees mm -hmm. back. I, I've had to 
Sioux people before we got into this business, and I'm not a Sioux happy individual, right. uh, but when it push comes to shove, instead of walking away, why not fight it? They, they, they have resources, um, and, and they can be tapped, they can be used against you. Um, you know, ATF is uh, definitely a, uh, uh, they have lots of resources, and, mm-hmm. and with our interaction with them, we're very transparent. We move forward and say, look, guys, you know, there's different ways to skin this cat. We don't have to go down this road. Um, recently with Reformation, they, they made a, a choice that we didn't agree with, but we also understand that the way that the GCA was written, that once they defined our firearm as a GCA SBS, and again, not NFA SBS, mm-hmm. then they had the the right to go the process that, that they're going. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I can remember talking to them and saying, hey, uh, how are you going to have a form for transfer to individuals or for transferring or traveling across state lines that's going to include the serial number and the name of the individual? And how is that not going to violate the Gun Control Act? Uh, there's another section that pertains to them maintaining a registry. And uh, I'll do the best interpretation. He just kind of <laughs> said, uh, I don't know. Uh, and nice guy and everything. Um, I won't mention his name because, again, right, out of yeah. respect. Mm-hmm. But um, I thought that answer was like, okay, guys, we're moving down a do- direction mm-hmm. that is going to be more problematic for you guys, especially right now with US DOJ dealing with the impeachment mm-hmm. issue. I mean, you got to imagine that's tying them up. Yeah. So, um, you know, I gave them a very eloquent solution, and I know I convinced some of the members that I was speaking to, and they were high up with ATF. It's just ultimately they decided to go the direction they did on Reformation, which, incidentally, the, the dealers that sold them are fine. The consumers that bought them are fine. Mm-hmm. I can't sell brand new ones right now complete, but we are selling uppers because yeah. consumers can take a Reformation upper and build their own, you know, in, home defense in, So weapon. in New Jersey, people can still get uppers? Yes. Okay. And But more importantly to that case mm-hmm. is that the state police was interfering with our ability to work with dealers, mm-hmm. and they were tainting that relationship, and mm-hmm. uh, they didn't have the right to do so. Right. So do you think, like in your opinion, right, do you think this is political, personal, is it technical, is it all of those well, things? Well, I, I think in on? a lot of administrations, a lot of organizations across you know, agencies, mm-hmm. they often come up with a conclusion first mm-hmm. and then backfill it with what they think relates to that. And that always causes trouble. If they start from the beginning and go, all right, well, let's see what the law has to say. Mm-hmm. I've, um, I've found things that I was wrong on that I and didn't even take anywhere down the road, you know, because right. sometimes you have a beer with the fellows back at the shop after hours <laughs> and you come up, well, right. what if we did this, mm-hmm. right? So, um, and then when you source it out and you go through everything, you may find that it's a great idea or you may find that it's roadblocked by an existing regulation yeah. or statute. Right. And so... Um, this is why you can't put out things that, like, the, the folks out there are like, why don't you make this, make this, make this? Right, yeah. yeah. You, you got to make sure that it's completely mm-hmm. legit. And we do a lot of homework with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm blessed to have um, uh, Jason Davis, a fantastic attorney that mm-hmm. is on our staff, too. Uh, he'll he'll see what I start, and then he's able to finish things and verify the ideas that, that we might come up with as a team. Okay. Um, it's it's amazing to me, I think, what's, what's going on out there, because it almost seems like to be in this industry, you're doomed. <laughs> you know, because you don't know what you're really working with. You don't know what rules you're really working with, right? And, and there's other people out there going through it. Um, there's other people in different stages. And it's just really weird to figure out what do you do if you're in this industry? Is it as easy as getting a consultant to say you can do this, you can do this, you can do this, or are things just being made up as, as they go along? I very rarely would use a consultant on something. Uh, I think it generally what you need to do is get your roll your sleeves up and get into it. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, I don't think there's a... A vi- unless you're you know, a blue chip company, I don't think there's a viable market where you can just pay somebody to um, woodshed the answer. You you got to get it most of the way there. And, and this is actually a lesson I learned from my father long ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, attorneys are great, mm-hmm. but you need to invest yourself into something and 
ensure that your attorneys go in the right direction and that they're aware of everything. Because okay. okay. they're not experts in everything. They're, okay. They, so you're saying like you can't build your business model based on attorneys. Right, or consultants okay. or okay. or anything. You, know, okay. you, you kind of have to um, be blessed with a good idea and, mm. and then do the groundwork to, to do majority of the fleshing out on it. And then you don't know what you don't know, so that's when you bring alternative uh, resources in at that time. Okay, so what I'm thinking here, what this is making me think is you're obviously an intelligent guy, right? <laughs> you know, you're Made creative. It this yeah, yeah. Um, it's all sun. It's all sun. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, you know, wh why are you doing this? What was, you know, how did you get into this business? What motivates you to do this all the time? Because I'm sure there's well, other things that easier. you could do that would be easier, or maybe you. This you know, is a lot easier do. than uh, what my degree was in. Uh, okay. I actually got a degree in music, believe it or not. Okay. And yes, so, you told me that. and what compositions, of course. Okay. So this is a this is a lot easier than that. Um, but uh, the the whole idea was I would I remember being in California and they would pass a new assault weapon law and go, gee, only if somebody did this, this, and this, it would be completely legal. Why isn't somebody doing that? Mm -hmm. Oh. And that's how you got in. Okay, yeah. so you said you have your degree in music. What was the plan? Were you supposed to be a rock star? No, no. Uh, um, Piano's my instrument. Okay. Um, uh, did some choir conducting, and uh, okay. it all worked out. I met my wife in a choir that I was conducting, and she had a thing for authority. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> how did that transition into this? That's what I'm wondering. Um, again, because uh, I had an idea that, uh, um, that, that prospered. So basically, we had a building in Morgan Hill. And it had two suites to it, uh, relatively large suites. And one of them went vacant, and that was okay. We tried to find somebody to fill it in. Mm -hmm. And then the other one went vacant. And all of a sudden, that building's costing you money. Mm -hmm. And so I go to my wife. I said, hey, I got an idea. Uh, and she said, oh, no, we're going to go to jail. I said, no, <laughs> <Okay>. prison. <laughs> uh -oh. uh -huh. And uh, so if you do it wrong, obviously, mm -hmm. that's the way mm -hmm. that goes. So, but, uh, so the idea was to work in California, develop the business and sell uh, up and down the state. So we went up and down the state, developed our own um, retail market uh, with the various dealers and, and um, prospected a lot of that, made that happen initially. And uh, so I really have a lot of respect for our sales reps, which we have 44 of them now, that go across the country uh, and now internationally uh, making things happen. So it's a, it's a lot of work. Um, but uh, what was happening at the time is the big boys weren't coming into California because they were scared about it. I was looking at it going, okay, well, here's the elements of the law. It's a piece of cake. Why, what, what's wrong with them? They need a consultant to tell them they mm -hmm. can come in here, mm -hmm. right? right? Yeah, yeah, so, I see. Uh, I knew what was up, so I would go and cultivate those relationships, and uh, that's what gave us a start. And after a year or two of doing that, companies like Smith & Wesson, I don't know if they were looking at me or if they were looking at the market in general. They went ahead and jumped in, and that crushed us. Uh, we had okay. we realized at that point that that was a commodity, and so to really uh, prosper, you have to compete asymmetrically. Mm -hmm. uh, what were you selling at that time? We were selling uh, M4 and lightweight ARs, oh, okay. and then we made a varmint model, and then we got uh, some legal. Um, uh, elements that helped out where we got some uh, single shot pistols mm -hmm. on the drop down list mm -hmm. as exempt for California. Okay. And so we were one of the first to be able to make that happen just by being polite and persistent with California. We didn't have to sue them or anything mm -hmm. like that, like we are having to do on Title I. Okay. So um, after that, we were um, just established and we were able to eventually spend uh, time and effort into R&D and uh, that ultimately paid off with the binary firing system and other projects that we've been working on. Okay, and so, you know, do you ever regret getting into this? This is a massive leap of faith. Um, I don't know, did, was, you, yes. did you just jump in there? You know, you mentioned your wife. Did you guys really, like, hem and haw about this? Like, oh, you know, should we do it? Should we not do it? And, and then the second part to that would be, was it worth it? It was a leap of faith. I mm -hmm. would say um, most days it does feel like it's worth it, mm -hmm. like any job. I'm sure you could agree yeah. that there's yeah. some days like, why am I doing this? But <laughs> most of the time it is yeah. rewarding. And yeah. um, quite honestly, getting a, an award from our peers uh, back at NASGW, the, mm -hmm. the largest distributor show of the year, uh, our peers gave us award for best new shotgun in 2019. That to me- That was, was interesting. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it was. And, and my son was there and- uh, 
so he got to see that, and um, it, it was a, a good personal moment. Yeah. It feels to me like, you know, I, I think we're kind of doing the same thing, uh, just on different sides. I don't know if Certainly. you, if you agree Certainly. We're all part of the same fabric. Yeah, but it feels like I do it for passion, mm -hmm. right? I need to make money, pay bills, stuff like that. I'm sure you do, and you've got employees that need to do the same thing. But it's, it's, for me, it's the passion is more important because I think that's what we really live off of mm -hmm. as human beings. Um, is it gratifying, you know, to you to be doing this? Who doesn't like winning? Okay, exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah, do you feel like you're winning all the time, though? Uh, there are setbacks all the time. Uh, in fact, I was talking to uh, uh, our attorney yesterday about the time for things and, and how... Uh, it just, the, the timelines, I want it done now. I'm kind of ADD about that. I want to move forward. Let's yeah. get it done. Let's let's do this, 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 and this. And luckily, there's some wisdom with some other attorneys that we've hired of, you know, okay, take a deep breath. That first thought you had is great, but maybe think about it, pray about it for a day. And if you still want to do that, great, go back to it tomorrow. Right. But yeah. you, you got to let it, let it sim. Yeah, I feel like you have the warrior gene, and you like the fight, okay? I don't know. Am I wrong? Um, I don't like fighting for fighting's sake. Right. I'd rather spend our time and effort working on something else that's fun and cool, like a 1022 trigger that is binary. Right. You know, that's that's where the energy is great to spend. But if you're getting blocked illegally, mm -hmm. well, why would you stand for that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so what would your advice be to the other? The reason why I'm trying to have this conversation with you is, I mean, you know, you talk to the other guys who do this, I'm sure. And, and you're seeing things going on in the industry. There's a lot of stuff happening right now, right? Mm -hmm. Around the country, it's not just the states that for a long time have been um, anti-gun, like California. We've got states that everyone thought, th these are pro-gun states. I live in Florida. Mm -hmm. We have what was going on in Virginia. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I feel like there's a coordinated um, effort to undermine the Second Amendment going on around the country, and it's getting traction in places that people once thought it would not get traction. Your, your experience with that, because you started a business in California and you've been dealing with it, mm -hmm. what would you say to, to your peers, the other guys in the industry out there that are dealing with that, how do you think they should approach this? They should be just as active, mm -hmm. and not, not just turning away because, oh, that looks difficult. Mm -hmm. um, so. When things come down the line, so certain letters maybe other people have gotten from ATF about serializing uppers, um, maybe they need to take a hard look at it and see if uh, the right letter from the right retired ATF agent might shed new light on, on that. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, there's alternatives out there, and um, to if you back down from it, then that'll be something that you'll have to, to own. And, and at the end of the day, these are rights given by God, not bestowed upon you by government. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If you, if you believe that. Yes. Yeah. And I do. Absolutely. And I hope you do too, and I hope I, all your listeners do. I absolutely do. And I think a lot of the folks out there do. I think sometimes we feel like there's companies out there that are selling us stuff, but they don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. and, and I get that. I understand it, you know, as, as a business, like, hey, we sell these, we make money. Um, but this is stuff that for, there's some people who just, hey, I've got my gun. I don't care if they ban stuff and other people can't get it. And then there's people like myself. I think about my children being able to have access to stuff mm -hmm. and my grandchildren, you know. So it's, you know, that's why I do it. But I, I always get that feeling in kind of like the, the gun world when I come to shows like this sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's heavier that not everyone is really in it for the Second Amendment, the Constitution of Freedom. Well, your work on that's been very enlightening. Um, when you first asked me, I think it was last year, you asked me, well, what's the Second Amendment mean to you? And mm -hmm. you mentioned that that was a question you were asking other folks. Mm -hmm. I was sitting there going, isn't this a no-brainer? Uh, but mm -hmm. since... Well, I ask myself that question, too, sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and so, uh, the truth be known, there's certain... Uh, CEOs of different companies that have publicly said, well, you know, we really need this registration scheme, and mm -hmm. uh, and you scratch your head going, you're on our side? <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, so uh, I think that's great work that you're doing to expose those inconsistencies, because mm -hmm. who wants to buy products from somebody that's not going to back you up when you need it? We're, we are in a fight to be able to preserve what we have uh, in firearms. The rest of the world, 
for the most part, has already gone by the wayside. And we're even trying to help them. That was the whole idea behind Providence. Why not create a gun that's not semi-automatic, but every time you pull the trigger, it goes bang. And, and we're still working on bringing that to market. Ryan, our um, senior engineer, has been doing a fantastic job of, of improving that. So when we are finally ready to release it, it'll be a marketable success and uh, make Sun's job easier and uh, yeah. that sort of thing. So where do you think, you know, where do you think the future of this is going? You know, and then what I'm talking about here is the whole industry, right? I don't know um, the exact time frame that you've been looking at it, but a lot of times I feel like the industry is maybe stuck in the Stone Age or stuck in the 80s. A lot of things have changed. Um, you know, we've, social media has made a massive impact mm -hmm. on uh, the, the firearms industry, just like every other every industry in the world, right? Mm -hmm. But especially on the firearms industry, and then now we're kind of like challenged when it comes to social media, right? Because they're aware of what we're able to do. I think if you go back to 2013, um, guys like myself were able to activate people and get them out there thinking about it, voting, looking at what's going on, and 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 then the uh, the, the people that own the platform or control the platforms realized that mm -hmm. and started pulling back access. So it doesn't just affect me. I think it affects you um, as a manufacturer. You guys are on social media, right? Yeah, like the Facebooks and yeah, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all that kind of stuff. How do you think it's affecting you, and where do you see us? all going in the future. Do you see us not being able to be on social media? Do you think it's important to do that, to sell stuff? What is this all going to look like, do you think? Well, th there is an interesting conflict there because at some point uh, you, you have to look at it as a privately owned enterprise like Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, but at some point it becomes so ubiquitous that it becomes a uh, almost a utility, mm -hmm. right? Like the telephone. Well, we're not using that as much. We're using things like yeah. Facebook. Yeah. So that there is a, probably a, a narrow pathway through there where um, the freedoms would not be censored. Uh, obviously, they're using their influence. There's no doubt about it. They're using their influence to create a new America. They mm -hmm. are terraforming it, basically making it where a conservative is not, uh, not wanted and, uh, you know, I, are you guys? Are you guys? Are you guys noticing the effect of it? So, like for well, example, I what. notice it as a creator, and for me, maybe I think about the numbers, right? Or I'm trying to reach an audience. That's mm -hmm. me. I think, uh, and you can tell me if I'm wrong. I think you're using social media to not only make people aware of your product, mm -hmm. but to help them interact with them, help them solve problems, and things like that. Are you noticing it? I know that's obviously you've got guys that do things for you, but do you notice it as the owner? Oh yeah. Uh, so uh, the the, the uh, we can't advertise the way we want. We don't get the reach that we that a soap company would get, for example. Uh, we're getting throttled down, and basically the only way, the only reason they're able to get away with it is because it is a private enterprise. Mm -hmm. So somewhere in there, there has to be um, a protection. We're, we're a Second Amendment product, mm -hmm. yet we don't have any federal standing mm -hmm. uh, for equal protection, mm -hmm. which is ironic, and yeah. we need that, because yeah. without that, you're finding that the bias in social media of what's being called, or what's not even being able to advertise, is outrageous. So mm -hmm. something needs to be done there to mm -hmm. fix that, and, but people got to want to uh, to raise their hand and say, look, you know, we need to vote in legislators that are going to do something about it. Um, you know, the flip side is I said something to Larry Keene about this, and he said, well, you know, everybody loves eBay, right? But because of eBay, having anti-gun policies, you have gun broker. Mm -hmm. and, and I think he's right with that. Mm -hmm. So there is a conflict there in between the free market economy and the persistence of the democracy. Is it really going to be there if we allow this to continue? Right. right. And, so, and so there's a that. difference between like the established system and being on that and maybe being free to be on it if it's a utility and then maybe creating our own ecosystem, like having something like Gunbroker or separate uh, platforms that would rival Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what do you think about that? Uh, I'm a big freedom guy. I want to be able to say what, what I want to say. I want to be able to do what I want to do. And at the same time, I agree with you. That's their thing. Mm hmm Where's the where's the solution here? Do you know? Do you have ideas? Are you you know curious about that? I I do have 
ideas. I don't know if they're going to be extremely popular with your viewers. No, I would like to know. I would like to know because I know I have my ideas. I like to know what your ideas are. So, um, a um, distributor came in here that works overseas, mm -hmm. and he was talking about um, his client mm -hmm. who's in the Middle East, mm -hmm. and he was uh, <laughs> saying that you know the world's going to heck. Mm -hmm. The Judeo-Christian values are just not there anymore and making things so much more unstable. The gentleman was not um, Judeo-Christian. He came from an um, Islamic background. Mm -hmm. And I scratched my head when I heard that, I, okay. and, and I thought that was interesting. So honestly, um, I believe in Christ, mm -hmm. and I think the Judeo-Christian values mm -hmm. are what made America what it is, the Protestant work ethic, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera. And whether somebody believes in Christ or not, uh, you know, I would hope that they do, hope and pray that they do. But the reality is that those values mm -hmm. are what made America what it is. And there's a lot of uh, socialist liberals that will try to say otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is what made us where we are and why we're different than many of the other countries across the world. Okay, I think that's undeniable. If you if you look at history, how America was made, built up, most of the world for that. Oh, there's a lot of people that will deny that. I mean, you yeah, know, the of biggest... Course, but, you know, they're free to do that, right? They're, they're free to think exactly, that way. Exactly, and I respect that. that. Right, right. So you how, asked my opinion, no, I, I agree with you. you. Yeah, I agree with where, where you're going with that. So what's the solution that you see inside of that? that? <laughs> Pray. Pray? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Probably That's not the answer you were expecting. No, it's interesting. It's interesting <laughs> what you're saying. It's interesting what you're saying. Um, I think ultimately what's going to happen is going to happen, mm -hmm. and the discipline that we have is going to affect whether or not we survive what happens. You right. know, that's what I believe. So, like, right. for me, if we're, if we're on the religion subject, um, I believe that religion is, is also a discipline. Right. You know, it's it's how the world become became organized. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, if we don't have that, if we don't have that discipline, when we get in trouble, I think if you don't have discipline, when everything's going amazingly and awesomely, you, you could get by, mm -hmm. right? Because if you uh, spend all your money, you'll make more money. You'll you'll be able to do things. But um, I think that if you don't have that discipline, and then times get tough, mm -hmm. then you're really in trouble. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. It's interesting. I, I like what you said. I like what you said there, Jay. I was thinking you were going to give me like an idea for a platform or something, you know. But well, that'll that come was, of that, That's right? deeper. That'll come yeah. of it, though. Yeah, that's deeper. Awesome. I'm glad we sat down and had this conversation. Uh, I think it was a little different. We can obviously talk about guns. You guys make cool guns. We are talking about that. I got a chance to shoot with Brandon, the uh, 1022 uh, trigger that's coming out there. I think people probably want to know why you put that out now. You know, why not a long time ago? What was the reason for that? You weren't you weren't in on I, that. It, it was have just been Brandon second. when we were out shooting. It yeah. should have been second. Yeah. Should have been second. It's going to be our number two trigger right behind the AR. You think so? Uh, yeah. 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 All the okay. smiles we saw at Media Day. Yeah. Everybody was giggling as they walked off so. the line like a little girl. Yeah. Well, everybody was asking me like everybody was asking me is like why didn't you guys come out with this years ago? Yeah. I'm like, well, I guess I now's the time. I think you did have the idea a long time ago, right? We yeah. had sales reps yeah. saying, if you do this next, it'll be huge. Right. But um, we had focused on the HK, and that took a long time to do. And Did that work out well, the HK? I mean, that's a very it's, popular gun as well. I don't know if it's as popular you're as, right. as a Ruger 1022. You're right. Yeah. You're, you're absolutely right. It, it sells. It, mm -hmm. um, it makes money, but mm -hmm. it's, not, um, it's not the sales volume at all uh, okay. compared to the AR. But the 1022, I think, will actually... Yeah, uh, rival that, and we look forward to making a lot of them. We've done our best to lower the price point. One thing I want to make clear is, initially, when we launch these, these are going to be parts and pieces that you're going to install. We'll do a video. Okay, you can be part of that if you want. Absolutely, I would like um, to. We'll we'll do a video. We're we'll put it in a pack, or yeah. the consumer it's not will put be, it in. Pack. It's not going to be a cassette style, just Correct. drop in Correct. situation. Okay, which makes not it initially. which is good and bad. Right, right? I think that way uh, cassettes you know, are easier to install, obviously, but not as flexible. And so we're going around the show here and talking mm -hmm. to folks that are already molding those components. And some mm -hmm. of them 
uh, really big publicly traded companies, nice mm -hmm. companies. Mm -hmm. They don't want to even consider selling Franklin anything. So, oh, wow. Um, so, but some of the other companies are a lot more um, willing to have that discussion. Mm -hmm. And uh, quite honestly, my estimation is we might be doing 20000 a year of these things. Wow. So uh, we'll probably get into molding them before too long. It might cost a few bucks more than the two ninety nine we have for the basic elements mm -hmm. you need to get rocking with this. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, we'll have another solution down yeah. the road. I think the future is, uh, of the firearms industry is more like small, because you're not, I think you're a big or small company. I don't know where to where to put the company or where you see yeah, it. That's a good you know? way of saying yeah. it. Yeah, but uh, I think the future of the firearms industry is more companies like yourself, and you know you're not alone. You know there's other guys oh, out certainly. there. Yeah, then the bigger, massive companies that can't turn around or can't see what's happening. Um, so other future stuff before we get out of here. Was another, I know I'm adding this. Okay. Uh, so we were talking about the 1022. Everyone's going to wait for that. Most popular gun, probably. I'm hoping um, to get it out in three months. My, <laughs> my salespeople tell me not to say that, but I just did. I'm oh, hoping. See, there's a big word I'm not going to edit hoping. that out. I'm I know. You're one take out. wonder. That's the way it <laughs> yes, is. Yes, uh, that's how I like it. That's how uh -huh. I like it. Um, so what other stuff are you guys thinking? Because I don't think you announced anything. When I was talking to Brandon, there was nothing... Uh, else new coming out. I know you've got a lot of other things that you've announced that you're developing. Uh, can we get some hints? Can I just get, you know, I'm inside the room, man. Yes, you are. Yeah, yeah. Give so, me a hint of something I'll, I'll that might be coming. Yeah. So we're working on something uh -huh. that is so freaking cool that the, the ATF wrote us a letter and said that not that it's illegal or anything, but it, it's absurd. <laughs> Oh, man. You know you're out of... When the ATF sounds like comments in the YouTube videos of one of your guns, that, I don't know. That's scary. You know they're out of ammo when they conclude that it's absurd. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> that's... Okay. There's going to be more to that. Okay. That's the teaser. That's the teaser. When do we... This. Yeah. When do we find out about this? When you... What, is this like... Can we look forward to this at NRA maybe or... <laughs> We're in negotiations with ATF on how okay. to... Um, you know, make things easy on everyone. It's going to come down to that. Yeah. Okay, awesome. I'm looking forward to that. Thanks, Jay. I appreciate Pleasure. it. Not everyone, you guys will find, not everyone's going to want to have these kinds of conversations. I appreciate you doing yeah. it. Mm -hmm. I appreciate these guys actually sponsor the podcast. So if you want to know why we could get up there and do and say whatever we want to, uh, they come on board. We sometimes have you there. I know you're always there. Sometimes when we get into stuff, you I, I usually am the guy lurking on the side. Yeah, 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 yeah. We see you. And I appreciate that. You've had Brandon come, come on, son. Etc. Um, it's it's really cool. I, I'm I'm glad that you guys are willing to do that with us. Yeah, our pleasure. Thanks, Jay. All, All right. right, we're out of here. See you guys. 2020 Shot Show here in Las Vegas. I think that's a great insight if you if you have the time and the patience to watch it. I think you'll enjoy it. Let us know what you think about all of this. If you've got comments, etc. I'll try to get these guys to jump in there and answer. Are you going to answer some stuff? Maybe people got some questions. Depends on when you do it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, probably. Yes. Yeah. yeah okay. We'll do it. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. We're out of here. <laughs>